what is going on draw it to crew Ramni here with another vlog video for you guys and today I want to talk specifically about how I got into reading comics more specifically Marvel comics if you guys are brand new to this vlog welcome this is pretty much where I get to talk about what's on my mind and talk about things that revolve around the comic culture and pop culture and all that stuff uh, if you guys didn't know I have a main channel which you can find in the description where I teach people how to draw their favorite characters so be sure to check that out anyway today I want to talk a little bit about my upbringing I grew up in the Philippines and I moved when I was 10 years old I moved to Canada so I, I spent my childhood in the Philippines and so I want to talk about how I got into Marvel Comics and the main way that I got into Marvel Comics was these were these right here and I have a huge collection of them still they are Marvel trading cards now if you guys didn't know, in the 1990s, uh, trading cards were the biggest thing. Uh, primarily for sports, uh, baseball cards were huge. Hockey cards were huge where uh, when I moved to North America, I, I moved to Canada, so hockey cards were huge. Baseball cards were huge. And they, uh, like Marvel, capitalized on that by making uh, trading cards with their comic characters. And um, when that happened, I was still in the Philippines and that seeped into Philippine culture as well. So growing up in the Philippines in the 90s uh, and the 80s, I was exposed to these trading cards. It was a huge thing actually. And when we were kids, we would play this game called Tex. And essentially what you do is you, uh, you have a set of cards and then you have like, friends with their sets of cards and you get to trade cards and you compete for them and essentially what you do is you you take like a bunch of cards that you want to trade away or cards that you want to give give away it's like gambling um you compile it all together like yours and then your friends and then you or the person like one person takes it and like puts it on on your put put it on your hand like this and then you like snap it up in the air and then they would land on the floor and whatever is facing up is like the is what you win so you win some you lose some uh, so that was how we ended up collecting cards and by doing that we didn't we never got any in mint condition but <laughs> uh, but that was a lot of fun and that was a game that we used to play in the neighborhood growing up in the philippines when that happened like when i started collecting like i, I had a huge stack of marvel cards in the philippines the the game text spelled t-e-k-s um it was it was with other cards too not just like marvel trading cards but i was mainly interested in marvel cards so i want to take a look at uh two decks specifically uh we're just going to sift through them uh that uh, those are the two decks that i collected as a kid those are the two decks that i played text with as a kid and those are the two decks that introduced me to marvel comics so i'm going to switch over to the overhead cam now and let's take a look at those cards specifically here we are with my collection of trading cards so many of you guys did not know that i collected these you guys probably only saw the action figures that i have in my background but i also have these trading cards and these are near and dear to me and they're some of the ones that i like i, I brought with me when i when we moved to uh, to thailand from canada or from the states because they're stuff that like reminds me of my childhood so uh let's go ahead and get started so i just want to show you guys kind of like some of the some of the cards that i own we can if you guys are really interested we can look at these one at a time i'm not going to do that today but if there's enough interest we could go through all, all of these uh these ones are not complete and they're super fancy super fancy cards uh these ones are almost complete uh this one is complete now this right here is the very first set of trading cards that marvel put out uh, i believe this was 1990 let me check yeah 1990 and they were the marvel comics superhero trading cards um made by a company called um impel impel made these and i believe impel made baseball cards and stuff too so uh yeah i could go through them there's a whole bunch here um there these ones are complete right here uh, there's a couple that are incomplete you can see there's some missing there and then i don't just have marvel over here i have spawn spawn cards okay there's that i also have superman superman cards um over here i have more marvel stuff like these these are the fancier cards that i own and 
and then I have more over here. And this right here, many of you guys have seen it. I posted a picture on Instagram of Amalgam Comics. So do you guys notice this right here is like Captain America and Superman combined. And this is Spider-Man and Superboy combined. This is Wolverine and Batman combined. If you guys want me to take a look at these specifically, I would love to do that. Uh, just let me know in the comment section if you guys are interested in watching a video like that. And then here, this is the Joe Jusco uh, Marvel Masterpieces from 1992. Love these cards. And then I have these ones, 1993 Marvel Masterpieces. So all of these cards, what they do is uh, they are essentially what I, as a kid, uh, who never really read all of the comics. These are what introduced me to Marvel characters. So, I mean, growing up in the Philippines, my English was a little bit limited. I didn't know how to, I knew how to read and I understood English, but I didn't know, you know, like I, I didn't know how to speak English. So reading comics and reading these trading cards are was one way for me to learn how to speak English. And that's what I, uh, that's what I associate with learning how to speak English are these cards and comic books and stuff. So, uh, yeah. And the thing is, when I, when I grew up in the Philippines, I didn't have money or anything. I didn't have access to the internet. There was no internet at the time for me to even like research or find out about these characters. I never bought like an issue of um, Quasar or anything like that. But I knew about the character because of the because of the trading card, you know, so so this was how I got introduced to Marvel Comics was through playing text with this specific trading card um, uh, set and the second set, which is this one right here. You guys can probably tell there's a bit of a difference in the layout. There's that stuff and then there's this. OK, so let's go ahead and get started. But I just want to sift through these. I apologize. They're kind of um, out of frame. They're, 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 they don't fit quite nicely. Uh, in camera here but uh, if you guys take a look this is essentially like the um, the basic layout of them is it's like a splash page of your superhero over here and then on the back side you guys can see the back over here it's got like uh, kind of like baseball cards I mean they're modeled after baseball cards right so you got their name and then you got their height and weight and then wins and losses so you can actually see now this was back in the 1990s or in 1990s so it's kind of um, it, it, it's kind of outdated, you know, but you can actually see how many wins, losses, and ties they have. And if you look at the Hulks, 409 wins, 213 losses, and ties are 62. Now, I don't know. I have no idea how they came up with that number because that would be sifting, sifting through like hundreds and years worth of like Hulk uh, comics to even like gather that information. So I don't know if they just made that up not, and not or not. Anyway, so the front has this. It's uh, essentially like a splash page, a splash comic or a splash uh, of the character doing some sort of heroic pose. And in the back, you see like their, their, their face, real name, all that stuff, arch enemies and nicknames. A um, little bit of information about them. Now, this is like the most important thing to me was because because I never read the comics and I never had the internet to do research on these, these are what I relied on for number one, um, knowing their backstory and number two, knowing what their superpowers were. So this is, this right here is what helped me to understand the Marvel comics universe, you know, and it's it, essentially, it, it, it fueled my imagination. And then there's like down here at the bottom, it says, did you know the Hulk can easily jump over three miles in one leap? Now, that's the cool thing is I never knew that. And like reading the comics, that was never told to me. So this is why I felt the cards were the most important thing. They're super important. I think they were more important to me than the comics even because I could get rid of the comics, but the cards were just really iconic. And it shows a lot of these characters in their iconic costumes. These are how I was introduced to the characters and so these were the comic costumes that were familiar to me. So here you got Captain America, you got Black Suit Spider-Man, you got the Hulk, Daredevil, Nick Fury, The Thing, who is my favorite character by the way, many of you guys know that already. Here's Professor X, Cyclops, Marvel Girl, this is actually Jean Grey before, before she adopted the name Jean Grey, she was Marvel Girl. Okay, so you got all the information about them here in the back. Okay, here you've got Wolverine, Phoenix, and this is not Jean Grey Phoenix, this is Rachel Summers Phoenix, uh, Power Man, Luke Cage, 
Like I never read an issue of Power Man before, but I knew who Power Man was. I knew who Luke Cage was because of the card. So that's why I love these cards so much. Dazzler, uh, Dagger from Cloak and Dagger, Quasar, who is no longer that popular, Submariner, the Hulk, Thor. So I knew the Avengers, I knew the X-Men, I knew Fantastic Four characters before like the movies came out, before I even got a chance to read many of their comics. Like I, I, I feel like I never read a Fantastic Four comic uh, before I was introduced to Mr. Fantastic. So a lot of them like Black Panther, Mr. Fantastic, I was introduced to through the card game, uh, through these cards, you know? So you got Mr. Fantastic, Black Panther, Archangel, Iceman, Wolverine again. So here's like yellow suit Wolverine. You got the brown suit Wolverine. Let me know in the comment section which uh, suit, which costume you guys prefer uh, for Wolverine. I think, I, for me, I like the brown because it just seems less silly than like a bright yellow and blue. But uh, because people watch the cartoons, they know this one more. But I believe, I believe Wolverine was in the brown costume a lot longer than he was in the yellow costume. Anyway, here's Kitty Pride or Shadow Cat, Moon Knight, Lockheed, who is Kitty Pride's dragon at the time. Even Aunt May has her own comic or has her own card. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, there are some cards that I would keep. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't throw them away. Like, like Spider Man, for example, because he's so iconic. I wouldn't play Tex with this card, but I would probably play Tex with this one because I, I don't mind getting rid of it. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to gamble some of the rarer ones for me, and the ones that I like the ones whose art I like. Uh, so we've got another Captain America here, a couple more Spider-Man, Silver Surfer, Human Torch, another another favorite of mine, you guys, if you were to ask me, my second favorite superhero would be uh, from Marvel, for, it would be Silver Surfer. Here's Doctor Strange, Havoc, Colossus, and then here's another Wolverine costume. He, I believe this is the Age of Apocalypse costume. Uh, Nightcrawler, here's the She-Hulk, Captain Britain, uh, Rogue and then Iron Man. This was the Iron Man that I was introduced to and I'll show you guys later on Or maybe not maybe in a different video. I'll show you guys like the Iron Man uh, Look that captured my attention the most and the one that I kept it was my favorite card most favorite card ever Invisible Woman. Here's Punisher. Long Shot Beast right here and then another Punisher. Oh, actually, this is the Punisher battle van So this is more highlighting the van as opposed to highlighting the Punisher. So that's cool. And here's Storm in her um, iconic like 80s and 90s costume before Jim Lee uh, re reintroduced her in a new white costume. This was the Storm that I knew. Here's Elektra. Here's Cloak. He's, here's the Wasp, you guys. I'm super excited, by the way. The movie comes out tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see it tonight. Kingpin, Baron Zemo, Loki, the Juggernaut. And here's a cool one. We never really saw him. He's kind of not that popular anymore. Here's Nightmare, Sabretooth, Electro, Dr. Octopus, um, Dr. Doom, Ultron, Enchantress, Magneto. So now you guys forgot to mention, here it says superheroes, right? Now you switch over to super villains. I never, uh, so like it, it was a clear cut, you know who the good guys were and you know who the bad guys were. So here are the bad guys, Bullseye, Mr. Sinister, Sandman, the Lizard, Mole Man, Dormammu. So this is this is how I knew Dormammu. I actually knew him as having like six eyes. The Leader, Blob, Black Cat. Um, you know the Leader was Leader is in the MCU, but we never really heard much about him. Uh, let me know if you guys remember that he is in the MCU, uh, in the first in, or in the Incredible Hulk movie. Here's Venom. Now this was an iconic card. Like when I saw this card, I loved, I immediately loved the art. Uh, and I would say like around this time was when like Superman, Super Spider-Man's black costume was popular. And so Venom was like at the peak of his popularity in the nineties. Green Goblin, Galactus, the Mandarin. Now look at this, you guys. This was how I pictured the Mandarin, uh, the Iron Man bad guy. So I, I remember him as having like a robotic mecha suit of some sort, like armor. Um, more green, high evolutionary Mephisto. Oh, check this out. Here's Thanos, here's Apocalypse, and here's the Red Skull. Now a lot of these, you guys, I could tell who the artists are. This looks like 
uh, Ron Lim. This looks like Ron Lim right here. And this looks like Art Adams right here. And I believe this is like Mark Bagley. And a lot of these artists are uh, people who worked the, um, the comics before, you know. And, oh, this is the cool part. Uh, rookies. Rookies are essentially like people who just got introduced in that year. So 1990, we got not not uh, Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, but Danny Ketch Ghost Rider was introduced in the 90s. Deathlock was introduced in the 90s. Uh, Nomad. This was Captain America's really funny look in the 90s. Fool Killer. Forgettable character. Okay. And then if I flip this way, this, you guys, right here was the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, you got, I don't even remember their names anymore. You got Charlie 27, Martin X, Yondu, and this is Star Stakar. Um, I don't remember these two, to be honest. And then you have famous battles over here. So the thing versus Hulk, oh man, these famous battles, like these are the kind of stuff that I picture happening in my head. You know, you see a little picture, a little snapshot of the thing versus the Hulk and you're like, in your head, you're imagining what would really happen if the thing and the Hulk really fought, like who would win, who wouldn't, who would lose, that kind of thing. So these famous battles was what fueled my imagination. It was so cool. Uh, Fantastic Four versus Galactus, Fantastic Four versus Doctor Doom. So yeah, they're pretty iconic battles. Oh, right here, I forgot to mention the new warriors uh, are there. Speedball, uh, Night Thrasher, Nova, uh, Vance Astro, I believe. Don't remember. Yeah, you can actually find out who they are over here. Oh, Namorita, Firestar. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is Alita and Nikki. This is Nikki, and this is Alita right there. Anyway, more famous battles, you guys. Let's take a look at these. Uh, Captain America versus Red Skull. Now this is Art Adams. You can really tell which one is this art. Daredevil versus Bullseye. Thor versus Surtur. I mean, like this was in 1990, you guys, and it took um, until 2018 for them to put this battle on screen. You know, um, 2017. This uh, because uh, Thor Ragnarok came out last year, and this is like the first, the first scene of Thor Ragnarok right here is Thor versus Surtur. Right? So isn't that cool? And like. Daredevil season, the Netflix Daredevil series season, season three, we get to see Daredevil and Bullseye. We saw Captain America and Red Skull in the first Avenger, uh, Captain America movie, Dark Phoenix saga, you know, like this is stuff that's coming up. Like this movie is coming out next, next year. Daredevil versus Kingpin. That's, that was like first season of Daredevil right there. Spider-Man versus Kraven. Now this is something that I would love to see. I would love to see Kraven in the MCU. If they can, if they can have Kraven in the MCU. X-Men versus Avengers. Now that we have the Marvel, uh, the Marvel brand and the Fox, Fox and Disney brand kind of merging together, there could be potential for this, you know? So what Silver Surfer, Mephisto, Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus, we saw this in Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man versus Venom, we saw that in Spider-Man 3, Evolutionary War. Uh, X-Men versus Magneto, it's pretty much the recurring theme of all the X-Men movies. Nick Fury versus Hydra, another recurring theme in the um, MCU. Atlantis Attacks, it would be awesome to see something like that. X-Men versus Fantastic Four. Oh, this is cool, Armor Wars. And we don't really get to see this in the, I uh, never got to see it in the MCU yet, but we did see a glimpse of uh, Iron Man's different types of armor in Iron Man 3. Acts of Vengeance, I don't remember what that is, but it's just villains acting on vengeance, I guess. The Fall of the Mutants, there's a big X-Men crossover back in the 90s, 80s and 90s. So these are um, some comic, like some really cool stuff that like, if you were a kid and you saw this, it's just like a playground, a mental playground of the things that were happening in the, in the Marvel universe, in the comics. And even though I never read these, I knew a little bit about them because of like the little blurb that's in the back of these cards. So Captain America versus Wolverine, that'd be cool to see. Spider-Man versus Hobgoblin, Daredevil versus Wolverine, Silver Surfer versus Thanos, that would be so cool. Hulk versus Wolverine, Daredevil and Punisher, like this right here. Um, season two of Daredevil, right there. X Factor versus Apocalypse. Now this was the time when the original X-Men uh, became the X Factor. So we saw this, we saw a little bit of this in the uh, in X-Men Apocalypse. Hulk vs. Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin. Never got to see these two meet up yet in the MCU. That would be really cool for them too. 
Spider-Man versus Green Goblin. Of course, you see that in the first Spider-Man movie. More famous battles over here. So let's go on this side. X-Men versus Freedom Force. Wolverine versus Sabretooth. That's like X-Men Origins Wolverine right there. X-Men and the Savage Land. This was never explored. Like the Kree Scroll War. Like we learned about the Kree in the MCU now. Thor versus Loki, another recurring thing in the Thor movies. Iron Man versus Titanium Man. It's like super cool. All right. And then I think this is the last part. Oh no. MVC, most valuable comics. So take a look. First issue, Fantastic Four. First issue of X-Men. Amazing Fantasy number 15, the first introduction of Spider-Man. Like these are iconic, um, super expensive now. If you have those comics in mint condition, uh, you'd be a pretty rich person. Um, first issue of The Punisher, uh, Journey into, into Mystery when they introduced Thor. This is the first appearance of The Punisher right here in The Amazing Spider-Man. Can you guys see all that? Here's the Avengers. Um, is it first issue? Yeah, it's the first issue of the Avengers. Um, when Spider-Man tried to join the Fantastic Four, that was kind of funny. Uh, giant Size X-Men when they introduced the second team, which is Wolverine, Storm, um, Colossus, Thunder... I don't remember. Thunderbird? Uh, Nightcrawler. They introduced those guys. And Banshee is there somewhere too. Um, Frank Miller's run on Wolverine right here. Uh, first issue introducing Wolverine, first issue introducing Iron Man and Tales of Suspense. Yeah, Wolverine was in The Incredible Hulk. And then here is uh, the reintroduction of Captain America in Marvel Comics right there, Avengers issue number four. Now take a look at these, you guys. These are team pictures. Uh, these are cool too. New Mutants, Rob Liefeld stuff right there. That's pretty cool. Um, X-Men, X-Factor. So you guys notice X-Factor is like the original X-Men, right? You have Beast, Cyclops, um, Iceman, Marvel Girl, or Jean Grey, Archangel right there. And then they switched over and became the X-Men again. Uh, you got So you got two different teams of X-Men right here. You have the Fantastic Four, of course. You got the Avengers, Cloak and Dagger, Excalibur right here, which is like the British X-Men. Uh, Avengers, there's... Is that? Who is that? Sorry, you guys. Cersei. That's Cersei. There's Thor, Captain America. Quasar was there. Uh, um, Jennifer Walters, She-Hulk is there in Vision. So these are like really cool. Brotherhood of Evil Mutants right there with the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver with their dad at the time, Magneto. I think that's all been retconned. Sinister Six, Hellfire Club, Alpha Flight, which is Canadian X-Men. <laughs> um, and then this is like the silly stuff right here. You got Spider-Man Presents and it's essentially people um but in spider-man's point of view so here's spider-man talking about himself here's spider-man talking about dr doom spider-man talking about dr octopus and the hulk and silver surfer it's like it feels like stan lee wrote these uh spider talking about thor punisher magneto captain america um dr doom iron man wolverine and here is a special card for stan lee Mr. Marvel, they call him. And then here is a checklist. If you guys want to check off all of these things, you want to see if you have collected all of them, which I have. So I have all of these cards. So that's that, you guys. So that's just one set. I'm not going to go too deeply in the second set, but I'm just going to skim through it. And if you guys want me to go through this in a different video, uh, I definitely would love to do that. I would love to talk about these. Now, this is a better, more improved version, I believe, of the... Uh, of the trading cards and here you finally get to see this is like the cool part you get to see their strength their speed their agility stamina durability intelligence they're like power bars so if you take a look at these it tells you how strong they are and how fast they are so you can actually see and compare and create fights in your in your head now this is the iron man card that was my favorite my most favorite card of all was this one right here i never i never gave it away so this this is the iron man card that i remember the most that's the iconic iron man look that i remember the most all right so anyway more more stuff right here like some some characters that didn't have a card in the first series quasar changed his suit by the way so did storm and thor all right i'm gonna keep going here so yeah, let me know if you guys want me to talk about the second series and maybe even the third series. There's a lot.
to look at. Like seriously, I love looking at these things. It's just, you know, if I'm ever bored, I just whip these out and take a look. Take a look at them. Like this right here, it even highlights the different weapons, and it tells you what the weapons do, including the Infinity Gauntlet, you guys. So that's kind of cool. And then, yeah, you got all these got rookies. New Fantastic Four. It has Wolverine, Spider-Man, the Hulk, and Ghost Rider. So I remember that distinctly. It was pretty cool. Masters of Evil was pretty cool. Uh, strength. So here it tells you like different strengths, agility, durability, and it tells you, and here you've got like speed, stamina, intelligence. Uh, I'll tell you more about these ones specifically uh, when I talk about these cards. But yeah, it shows you like number one is slow, number seven is light speed. Aunt May is a silver surfer. So that's speed right there. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, and then here's the third set, which I don't have completed. Anyway, so those are the sets, you guys, for all of the... Uh, or the, the, the two sets that I specifically played Tex with. And um, this is a long video. I didn't intend it to be such a long video, but thank you so much for watching, you guys. Thanks for letting me relive a little bit and talk about my childhood right here. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button to my main channel if you guys haven't done that as well. Um, yeah, and again, like I said, let me know if you guys want me to talk about more of these cards because I got, I got stacks of them, right? I got tons, so... Uh, yeah, that's it, you guys. Thank you so much, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.